Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome to my channel, Ifers Inklings. And today I have a Tag Tuesday video for you. This is the Finally Fall book tag and I was tagged to do this video by Amanda over at A Quarter Books in Love. I will tag her video below. This original video was created by um, channel Tall Tales and I will also link that one down below. This one has 11 questions. I have not looked at any of these yet so I have not prepared anything for them. So let's dive into them and get started. Question number one. In fall the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. Now I am not a person who can really picture vividly settings, locations, people, any of that based off of the descriptions in books. I can get kind of a general impression, but I cannot vividly paint that picture like I know a lot of readers can. However, as I was listening to this book, I was mesmerized. I can picture every detail of this location, um, and that is from Maggie Stivotter's All the Crooked Saints, their little desert compound area in Colorado, I have the perfect picture of it in my mind, down to every little grain of sand where the buildings are located, everything. And it was very surprising for me to get so drawn into this setting based on these descriptions because it's not something that typically happens to me. Question number two. Nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. If you have seen any of my videos in the last few months, you will know without a doubt what my answer to this one is going to be. <laughs> and that is going to be Juniper Lemon's Happiness Index by Julie Israel. Um, it deals with the one sister's dealing with um, the death of her, her sister. And it goes through the stages of grief, the stages of loss, the stages of despair and guilt all the way through to the end where you kind of get that hope and acceptance feelings back. Um, and I thought it dealt with it wonderfully. I have never cried so hard with a book. I actually listened to this one on audio and I'm glad I did because I would not have been able to read some of those pages. I was crying so hard. I got so emotional through this book, but it was exactly the book I needed at the time to deal with this um, feelings of those same feelings that I was feeling and dealing with at the time. Number three, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I don't read a lot of nonfiction books. I um, tend to read when forced to read nonfiction books I tend to lean to more towards memoirs um, and occasionally if absolutely forced because for some reason a self-help type book so the one most recent one that I've read that kind of taught me something new was Trevor Noah's Born a Crime memoir and this one deals a lot with apartheid in South Africa. Um, and I didn't know a lot about apartheid, I, I'm, other than what we're taught about in history classes, in school and stuff. But because that's South Africa history, over here in the US, we don't get taught a lot of that kind of history. Especially not the nuances that he talks about in his memoir, growing up in South Africa. Um, and so I learned a lot about 
what it would have been like with the um, political atmosphere during his life, because it's still there, um, but growing up during apartheid, being a child of a mixed couple, the bullying he faced, the different um, classes of segregation, all of that was fascinating and new, and I had no idea about it. So, um, that was definitely something new that I learned. Number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group that you'd like to be a part of. So originally, I would have said the Harry Potter trio. That is a friend group that I would have loved to have been in. But my new recent friend group that I am just in love with is that of Carew and Zuzana and Mick from The Daughter of Smoke and Bones. Um, I signed me up to go live in the world with the monsters and the angels. <laughs> it, as long as I could be with Carew and Susanna and Mick. Five, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. This is what I got. There's some browns and some reds and some oranges all in this pile. Number six, Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. In this book, Sherrod tells a story of the um, of Aladdin to keep herself alive one more night because she is telling this story to Khalid. Khalid. I don't know why I can't pronounce that. Number seven. The nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. Any of the stories in this book right here, Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, they are an this is an anthology of horror stories, and they are creepy, and they are spooky, and they terrified me. Number eight, the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. Short? So, I don't know what you would consider a short read, but it's definitely a quick read, because you will be engrossed in this book until you finish it. Um, and I'm finding it to be heartwarming. I have not finished this book entirely yet. I'm listening to the audiobook and I have about 30 minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this. But I am loving this story. And that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Um, and it's a cute office romance. Hate to love kind of thing going on and I am loving it and I am enthralled and it's heartwarming and it's sweet and I don't know about short though it's about 360 something pages long but it would be a nice rainy day read number nine fall returns every year Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. I would really, really like to read um, The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stavater again. Especially in the fall because it takes place on November 1st. Um, so I definitely would like to revisit that one. And that may be uh, on my TBR for next fall been several years since I've read the book um, and I definitely want to do a reread of it. Number 10,
Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite reading accessories. So for me, if I'm going to be curled up in my chair reading my books, I am going to have to have close by my water. Um, and it's a Harry Potter. This one is a Harry Potter one. And my blanket. Um, this blanket, it's just a little quilt. Um, you can see it's got frogs on it. Okay, let's see if it'll adjust. It's got little frogs on it and in different patterns. And it's actually, um, I think, a twin size. It was made for me by one of my Girl Scouts several years ago, and I treasure this blanket. Um, but I have to be cuddled up with something snuggly, and I usually use this blanket. Those are my reading accessories. I also usually have close by... Um, obviously a bookmark, my phone so I can up my, update my Goodreads or Twitter as I go along, and here lately I have also been using sticky note tab things, these little guys. Can you see that? These little guys right here. Other than that, I don't need much. And then finally we've got question number 11, which is to spread the autumn into to spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. I'm not sure who I'm going to tag because I think everybody but me has done this tag already. But if I find somebody that hasn't done it, I will link them down below and tag them that way. But if you are watching this and you have not done this tag, then consider yourself tagged as well. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, bye.